The rapper XXX Tentacion has been shot apparently. Hip hop is a relatively new genre of music, but within a matter of decades, it has taken over the world. And with that, sadly, many of its greatest stars have fallen, which is what we'll be discussing today. Malik Taylor was born on November 20th, 1970 in Queens, New York. In 1985, he formed a group named Quest, later changed to a tribe called Quest. While Malik, now performing under the name Fife Dog, had only a small amount of involvement in their first album, he took a much bigger role in their landmark project, The Low End Theory, and people lauded them for producing a sound unlike anyone else in the space. However, despite this accomplishment, not everything was going right in Fife Dog's life. Around the release of Quest's first album, he was diagnosed with diabetes. This would be an issue Malik would struggle with his entire life. According to him, he simply couldn't stop eating sugar, even going so far as to call it an addiction. As his condition worsened, he began experiencing more and more complications. In 2008, he received a kidney transplant from his wife after suffering renal failure although he would later require a second one in 2012. Despite the best efforts from doctors, Malik Taylor passed away on March 22, 2016. In his honor, a tribe called Quest continued to work on an album they had started prior to Fife Dog's death. And We Got It From Here, Thank You For Your Service was released later that year. Richard Johnson, otherwise known as Tweety Bird Lock, was a gangster rapper from Compton, California. His solo career began with an album dissing fellow hip-hop artist Eazy-E after he allegedly refused to sign Richard to his label. In addition to this, Tweedy also helped organize the rap group Bloods and Crips in 1992, attempting to form a unity between the two rival gangs as Richard himself was a member of the Crips. While the collective did see some success, they suffered from a great deal of infighting and eventually fell apart in 1995. Fast forward. 25 years and it was reported that Tweety Bird Locke passed away at the age of 52 due to a heart attack. Gregory Edward Jacobs proved to have an immense talent for music at a young age, and began performing under the name Shock G in his teen years. At just 16, he was offered the job of DJ at a local radio station in Tampa, Florida, making him the youngest person in the field at the time. Eventually though, Gregory became much more interested in performing music than playing it on the radio, so he moved to California to pursue other ventures. Shock G would soon form a group called Digital Underground, with whom he would release two singles. Not only did Gregory play a large part in writing and recording the songs, but he also drew the cover art himself. The group continued to expand in popularity from there, going from indie favorites to mainstream sensations in a matter of years. Shock G became one of the group's biggest claims to fame, as his many talents and onstage presence made him a big draw for crowds. His charismatic presence made him beloved loved by the mainstream, and as a producer, he was able to help kickstart the careers of other superstar rappers such as Tupac Shakur. Sadly though, all of this was cut short when the rapper was found dead in a Tampa hotel room at the age of 57, after an apparent drug overdose on April 22nd, 2021. Nathaniel Hale began his professional rap career under the pseudonym Nate Dog in 1990. This is when his cousin Snoop Dogg and his longtime friend Warren G formed a group named 213. As it would turn out, success would be more or less instantaneous for the novice performer, as the trio's first demo tape was soon heard by rapper Dr. Dre, who took a liking to Nate's deep singing voice. After he was featured on Dre's album The Chronic in 1992, Nate Dogg became highly sought after by other performers, working with the likes of Tupac, Eminem, and Ludacris. The thing is, from the very beginning of his career, Nathaniel was the subject of multiple arrests, with the charges ranging from drug possession to armed robbery. 
Many of these run-ins with the law were the result of his relationship with a former girlfriend, a woman who the press only identified as Rhoda. In June of 2000, Hale was arrested for allegedly kidnapping his significant other and setting her mother's car on fire. He was bailed out by Dr. Dre and managed to get away with nothing more than a thousand dollar fine and three years probation. Years later in 2006, he was detained once again for breaking the restraining order Rhoda had filed against him. Allegedly, not only had he been trespassing on her property, but had been sending threatening phone calls as well. Nate Dogg managed to avoid jail time for this too, walking away with another three years probation and an order to attend an intervention program. While he was dealing with the legal proceedings surrounding the case, Nathaniel suffered a stroke in 2007, which resulted in the left side of his body being partially paralyzed. Although doctors expected him to recover, in the years that followed, the rapper suffered more and more strokes, eventually succumbing to his condition on March 15, 2011, at the age of 41. Garrett Burton, otherwise known as Da Real G Money, was a rapper and a rising star in the Louisiana hip-hop scene. He was also a member of the rap group TBG, who for years had been feuding with a collective known as NBA. Things began heating up between the two factions when G Money publicly called out Kentrell Golden, aka NBA Youngboy, in a song in which he insulted the rival performer's sister. This would prove to be a fatal mistake. On September 10th, 2017, at the age of 22, Garrett Burton was shot dead in the parking lot outside of his recording studio. Youngboy's fellow NBA member, DeAndre Fields, was later arrested and indicted for the murder. Kenneth Moore, aka Big Mo, was a Texas-based rapper whose main claim to fame was performing songs about his hometown of Houston. His debut album, City of Syrup, focused on the area's love of the drink known as Lean. Big Mo continued writing and recording his Texas-themed music over the following years, becoming a well-known staple of the Houston hip-hop scene. Sadly though, his career was cut short after he suffered a heart attack and died on October 14, 2007, at the age of 33. Carnell Bugs Pitts was a member of D12, a hip-hop group from Detroit, Michigan co-founded by Eminem. The collective was a big hit in their local area, and Bugs himself managed to carve out a decent career of his own, releasing solo tracks and featuring on other rappers' songs. On the night of May 21st, 1999, Pitts was set to perform on stage in Grand Rapids, Michigan as part of Eminem's tour. Unfortunately, this never ended up happening. Earlier that day, Bugs had been having a picnic with some friends at Belle Isle Park in Detroit. At one point, a woman in his group was sprayed with a water gun fired by a stranger, and an argument quickly broke out. The situation went from bad to worse when the verbal altercation turned into an all-out fistfight, and Bugs attempted an ill-fated effort to calm things down. It was then that one of the men they had been arguing with went to his car, pulled out a rifle, and fired three shots into the rapper. As the attackers fled the scene, they also ran over Carnell's body. Despite being rushed to the hospital, Bugs passed away at the age of 21. Seagram Miller was a rapper who put a target on his back after releasing a song about gangs in Oakland, which apparently ruffled a few feathers. In 1993, Seagram was a victim of a shooting which injured a police officer, although the rapper himself walked away unharmed. While nothing was ever confirmed, authorities suspected the attack was carried out by a drug lord who was upset by how his gang was portrayed in Miller's song. Years later, on July 31st, 1996, Seagram was once again shot on the streets of Oakland. This time, however, he was not so lucky as he ended up passing away from the wounds. While no arrests have ever been made in the case, most believe the shooting to have been a retaliation for Seagram's track all those years prior. Tyrus Gerard Himes was a frequent collaborator with Tupac, joining his rap group Thug Life in 1992. 
Himes performed under the name Big Psych, a play on the nickname Little Psycho, which had been bestowed upon him as a child. He would also go on to join Tupac's other collective, the Outlaw Immortals, this time under the pseudonym of Mussolini. For his entire life, Big Psych suffered from a heart condition, and on December 5th, 2016, he was found dead in his home due to complications from his health. Markel Antonio Morrow, better known as Gunu, was a Maryland-based rapper best known for his many collaborations with fellow performer Little Dude. His fans came to him for his distinctive whispered singing voice, and those who knew him described the young artist as very kind and generous. Tragically though, the 24-year-old's life was cut short on March 18th, 2022, when he was shot in the back and killed during a suspected mugging. Many local hip-hop artists came together to mourn yet another promising young talent taken from the world too soon. However, none of them could have predicted what happened next. A month later, a memorial was held by Markel's family at the Bliss Nightclub in Washington, D.C., advertised as a party for fans to gather and celebrate the rapper's life. When the guests arrived, though, they were shocked to find Gunu's embalmed corpse propped up on stage, like a mannequin for all to see. After the fact, Markel's family defended their actions, with his mother claiming that this was exactly the sort of celebration her son would have wanted. From a very young age, Robert Ross was interested in hip-hop, writing his own songs at just 11 years old. At 22, he joined a rap group called The Schizophrenics, performing under the name Bacardi Rob, although this was later changed to Black Rob. As he continued working, Rob signed on with Bad Boy Entertainment, with whom he was able to feature on songs by rappers such as Puff Daddy and the Notorious B.I.G. He also had a successful solo career, with his debut album from 1999, Life Story, going platinum. However, as he would soon learn, fame is fleeting. In 2004, Robert was arrested on charges of grand larceny after allegedly stealing over $6,000 worth of jewelry. When he failed to show up for court, the artist was sentenced to seven years behind bars. He managed to get an early release in 2010, and while he attempted to jumpstart his rap career again, he failed to find the same success he did before his incarceration. Over the following years, Black Rob would repeatedly find himself homeless and destitute before passing away of cardiac arrest in April of 2021. Jay the Youngin, real name Javorius Scott, started his career online via websites such as YouTube and SoundCloud. These songs quickly gained popularity, and in just a few years, he went from a local celebrity to a rising star producing professional studio albums. As Jay gained notoriety and pursued his dreams of fame, though, he also began to sink into a life of crime. Beginning in 2019 and continuing for several years, he was detained multiple times, mainly due to him illegally possessing drugs and firearms. But his most severe arrest came on September 21st, 2021, when he was charged with accessory to murder after an incident a year prior, in which a gang-related shooting injured two people and killed one innocent bystander. Jay would be released on bond a few days later, but would never stand trial for his involvement in the crime. That is because on July 27th, 2022, a black truck pulled up in front of the young rapper's home, and five heavily armed men stepped out of the vehicle and opened fire on Jay and his father, who were relaxing in their front yard at the time. The up-and-coming artist was killed in the mayhem, and the shooters were gone just as suddenly as they had arrived. After the fact, Jay's father, who managed to survive the attack, stated that the killers had simply been jealous of his son's success. Police had other ideas, though. While no arrests have been made in the case, authorities strongly suspect the murder to have been gang-related. Melvin Noble Jr. was a rapper from Texas who performed under the name Mo3. On the morning of November 11th, 2020, as he was driving away from the house of a female friend, Melvin looked in his rearview mirror and noticed he was being followed. The artist drove onto the I-35 freeway in an attempt to lose his pursuers, but they stayed right on his tail. According to reports, Melvin eventually crashed his car, leaving him with no other option than to try to take out a gun to defend himself. 
This is when the other car stopped as well, and a man stepped out wearing a mask and carrying a rifle. Melvin desperately reached for a weapon, but as his attacker drew near, he was left with no choice but to make a run for it. The gunman opened fire, killing Mo3 and injuring a bystander. It wouldn't be until a month later when an arrest was made in the case. This is when K1 Dontrell White was detained. Following questioning, authorities believed the murder to have been committed out of jealousy due to Mo3's relationship with the woman whose home he had been leaving on that that fateful morning. Robert Cooper Phillips, otherwise known as Koopsta, with the last name being a word I won't say, was a member of the group 3-6 Mafia. They released many successful albums together until he was forced to leave the collective in 2000 due to his arrest on charges of domestic violence and aggravated burglary. After that, Koopsta managed to bounce back to a fairly successful solo career, and even occasionally collaborated with his former 3-6 Mafia members. This all came to an abrupt end on October 6, 2015, when Robert experienced a stroke and was rushed to the hospital. Three days later, he was taken off life support, passing away at the age of 40. Nicholas Thompson was an aspiring artist who uploaded his songs to YouTube under the name Nick Blixkey. On May 10th, 2020, just a month before his debut mixtape was set to release, the 21-year-old rapper was found shot in the back in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Prospect Lefferts Gardens. Once the police began their investigation, they found a series of social media posts taunting the deceased young performer leading them to believe the killing was caused by a pre-existing beef. In June, a suspect was arrested in the case, a man by the name of Caliph Green, who police managed to link to the crime from surveillance video and witness testimony. Drill rap is a particularly controversial subgenre of hip-hop. Essentially, this is a style focused on dissing other rappers who were recently murdered. Because of this, many who choose to perform it are often killed in retaliation for their insults against the deceased. These performers are then made fun of by other drill rappers, and the circle of life continues. For just a small example of young men who have lost their lives due to this violence in just the past few years, we have names like E. 60, FBG Cash, Avanti Frowner, Chi Wits, FBG Duck, T. Wu, and Dusky the Man. In the case of the last entry in that list, as people were leaving his funeral service, gang members opened fire in retaliation for the deceased rapper's slights against them, killing six more. These are of course not the only rappers who have been killed due to their involvement in Drill, and they more than likely will not be the last. Charles A. Johns was a rapper from Louisville, Kentucky who, under the stage name Chuck Tailored, followed his passion for music and supported his family through performing. Late at night on April 25th, 2019, Charles met up with a woman by the name of Tiffany Taylor, who had apparently wanted to buy marijuana from him. However, this turned out to be an elaborate ruse set up by the woman and her partner, Stephen Guy. Just as the deal was getting started, Guy snuck up from behind and mugged Johns with a rifle. The gunman then opened fire, slaying the rapper before the couple fled into the night. They didn't make it very far though, as Taylor was arrested a few hours later, with Guy following shortly thereafter. Darnell Lindsay lived in Detroit, Michigan and performed alongside the Street Lords rap group under the name Blade Icewood. They would later change their name to the Cheddar Boys, drawing the ire of a different troupe known as the Eastside Cheddar Boys. A heated rivalry began over an argument about which side came up with the name first. The conflict was only exacerbated when Icewood's team released a track with the subtitle The Original Cheddar Boys. This beef soon escalated to a war when, on September 20th, 2004, a group of men armed with AK-47s broke into Darnell's home, shooting the rapper several times and leaving him paralyzed from the chest down. Despite the fact he was now restricted to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, Icewood refused to cooperate with investigators, meaning no arrest was ever made in the case. One year later, on April 19th, Blade Icewood was attacked once again at a car wash, and this time he did not survive. 
Talik Freaky Ta Rogers was part of the Lost Boys hip hop collective in the 90s. Their feud with a rival gang known as the Hellraisers began in late 1998, when they attacked and mugged several Lost Boys members. Finally, things reached a boiling point when an associate of the victimized group took matters into his own hands, shooting and killing a Hellraiser by the name of Michael Saunders. The odd thing was that police would later state that they found no connection between Saunders and the robberies. The murder enraged Kevin's half-brother, Kevin Jones, who reportedly went on the warpath in search of the killer. Although he was unable to track down the actual perpetrator, Jones decided to settle for the next best thing, the man he falsely believed to be the murderer's cousin, Freaky Ta. As Talik was leaving a party in the early morning of March 28, 1999, Jones exited a van and shot him to death before fleeing the scene. He was soon caught by police, and he, alongside two co-conspirators, were charged with the murder. Shubdeep Singh Sidhu was a true renaissance man. He acted, he sang, he rapped, and at one point even ran for political office. He was most active in Canada and his home country of India, where he would frequently sell out shows and was well known as one of the most popular artists in his region, performing under the nickname Sidhu Moose Walla. However, the oftentimes violent nature of his lyrics also attracted a great deal of controversy to Sidhu. In early May of 2020, videos were posted of the singer shooting firearms with the help of police. The officers involved were quickly suspended, and Sidhu was charged with violating the Arms Act of 1959. Those who loved the rapper viewed him as a rebel against a corrupt government, but those who hated him believed he was nothing more than a violent man promoting gun culture. On May 29, 2022, as Moose Walla was driving to his aunt's house, his car was blocked by a gang of armed gunmen. After a spray of gunfire by both sides as the singer desperately tried to fight back, he was soon shot dead and his killers fled the scene. After the fact, several gangs around India and Canada took credit for the murder. Apparently, there were many people with a vendetta against the popular performer. Eventually, an Indian gangster by the name of Lawrence Bishnoi was arrested alongside several of his associates, due to the fact that authorities believed them to have a long-standing rivalry with the deceased artist. MC Eric Breed was a performer from Flint, Michigan. Though he never quite broke into the mainstream, he became a massive sensation in his home state, releasing a plethora of albums through various labels. However, tragedy struck on September 5th, 2008, when Eric's kidneys suddenly failed during a game of basketball. The artist was quickly hospitalized and placed on life support. Though he was able to hang on for a couple more months after the fact, MC Breed finally succumbed to his condition on November 22, 2008. Lisa Lopez helped form the all-girl music trio TLC in 1990. The group found instant success with the release of their first album, selling millions of copies and skyrocketing them to stardom overnight. Lisa decided to adopt the nickname Left Eye after receiving a compliment about her peeper. She decided to lean into this, frequently covering her right eye during performances and eventually piercing her left eyebrow. Sadly though, this career came to an abrupt end on April 25th, 2002. During a trip to Honduras, Lopez ended up in a vehicular accident while swerving to avoid an oncoming truck, killing her instantly. In her honor, her family started the Lisa Lopez Foundation in order to help struggling children. Deshaun Robertson released his rap videos on YouTube under the name Little Loaded starting in 2018. After some other creators reacted to his music, Deshaun's channel quickly exploded in viral interest. This success led him to sign with the label Epic Records, with whom he released a couple mixtapes and albums. The thing is, not everything was going right in Robertson's life. On October 25th, 2020, the rapper accidentally shot and killed his friend Kalia Walker while filming a music video. Horrified, the young man soon turned himself into police. While he was initially arrested on the charge of murder, authorities would later change it to manslaughter. 
this incident clearly left a lasting impact on little loaded psyche. In late May of 2021, he posted a series of worrying messages on his Instagram account, seeming to ask God to forgive him for his actions. A few days later, on May 31st, Deshaun Robertson's mother found him dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. From a young age, UK rapper Joshua Ribeira was set on a specific path in life. When he was 13 years of age, the boy's father was sentenced to a life in prison after shooting someone to death in a robbery gone wrong. After that, Joshua began falling into some bad habits until he too was arrested for petty theft and sentenced to six years in a young offender institution. This event clearly had an effect on the youth, and he decided to channel his emotions into music. He began producing songs under the name Depp's Man, and soon rose through the ranks to become one of the biggest names in the English grime rap genre. On September 20th, 2013, during a memorial service for a friend who had been killed a year prior, Joshua was stabbed in the heart. Although he clung to life for a little while, the artist passed away from his injuries the following day. It wouldn't be until March of 2014 that an arrest was made in the case. An 18-year-old named Armani Mitchell, who police suspected committed the crime out of jealousy over a woman. Mitchell was later sentenced to life imprisonment, with a minimum sentence of 18 years. Underground Kings, sometimes referred to as UGK, was a rap duo consisting of Bernard, Bun B. Freeman, and Chad Butler, better known as Pimp C. After releasing music together for several years, the team got their big break in 2000, when they were featured on Jay-Z's song Big Pimpin', officially putting their names on the map. But a wrench was soon thrown into the success in December of that year, when Pimp C pulled a gun on a woman at a mall shoe store after getting into an argument with her. The rapper attempted to flee, but he was soon arrested by police outside the mall and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. While Butler was initially sentenced to probation and community service, he was later given eight years in prison in 2002 after failing to attend his numerous court-mandated appointments. He managed to get out early, though, and was released on parole in late 2005. After this, Pimp C continued performing music, both as part of UGK and his solo projects. This all changed changed on December 4th, 2007, when Butler was found dead in his hotel room. Apparently, he had consumed too much of the substance known as purple drink, which had not combined well with his pre-existing condition of sleep apnea, causing the rapper to pass away as he rested. Sad Frosty was best known for his social media presence, frequently posting his music and interacting with fans on sites like TikTok and Instagram. Although he enjoyed sharing his art with the world, he preferred to keep a distance between his personal life and the internet. In fact, he remains so private for his entire career that even his real name is not known for certain. The closest thing we have to an answer for that question comes from a tweet posted in 2019, where he claims to be named Sam Hernandez. The distance between himself and his fans made it all the more shocking when, on January 16th, 2022, a series of images was posted to the rapper's Instagram with the caption, Long Live Sad Frosty, 3497-11422. As of yet, no official cause of death has been made public, but Sam's record label confirmed the news and have put out a few unreleased tracks in his honor. Carlos Walker, aka Shoddy Low, was responsible for the creation of the rap group D4L along with his friends Fabo, Mook B, and Stoney. Before they made it big, Walker funded his team's projects single-handedly, as he believed in their talents enough to take that risk. He would soon be proven right with the release of their debut album, Down For Life which sold incredibly well and featured several of their most iconic songs. This triumph springboarded all the rappers into stardom, as Shoddy Low proceeded to release more music both by himself and with his band. They became so successful, in fact, that in 2003, they were able to create their own label. Tragically, though, on September 21st, 2016, Carlos Walker's car went over a guardrail while driving on the freeway early in the morning causing him to crash into a tree. The vehicle then burst into flames, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Kenneth Jackson Jr. had enjoyed rapping since he was a young man, getting discovered and signed to a record label when he was just a teenager. 
Taking on the new identity of G Slim, the Prodigy performer released the album Four Deuces and Trays to great local success. It seemed as though Kenneth had a promising career ahead of him, but unfortunately, this would be the only album he ever got to create. On October 13th, 1996, G Slim was gunned down in the streets of New Orleans. Although Kenneth was rushed to the hospital, his wounds proved too great, and he was pronounced dead at just the age of 21. While authorities searched for the ones responsible for the crime, the identity of G. Slim's killer remains a mystery. Kentra Young was best known for rapping alongside Chief Keef and his Glow Gang under the name Trey Savage. While he seemed like another rising star in the Chicago rap scene, fate had other plans. On June 19th, 2020, as Young was dropping his girlfriend off at her apartment, a vehicle swerved in front of the rapper's car, blocking his path. This was when the driver stepped out and began firing, striking his target in the neck and shoulder. Trey Savage began driving forward in a panic, although he only managed to hit a nearby parked car. The attacker fled from the scene, and Ken Trey Young was pronounced dead. It wouldn't be until a year later that a suspect would be arrested in the case, a man by the name of Dimitri Jackson. Although authorities have not given a specific motive, they believe it had something to do with a gang beef. LePreston Porter first decided to seriously pursue a career in rap after spending four years in prison for minor offenses between the ages of 21 and 25. According to him, he made mistakes as a young man, and decided to channel his emotions into music. Performing under the name Snooty Wild, Porter quickly became a local sensation in his home state of Tennessee. But things soon escalated when fellow rapper Yo Gotti assigned the artist to his imprint collective music group. This gave Snooty Wild a national stage, allowing him to perform his music across the United States. Porter continued to have a prosperous career after this, until he was suddenly found dead in a ditch with a bullet wound to his neck in Houston on February 25th, 2022. The infamous mob was a rap group made up of childhood friends from New York. Among their members were twin brothers who performed under the names Twin Gambino and Twin Scarface. Scarface was not with them long though, as he passed away in a car accident very early on into the group's time together in 1996. All the rappers mourned his death, referencing him in several songs as the years went on. Twin Gambino would later change his stage name to Big Twins in honor of his brother's memory. Melvin Vernell III got his start in the hip-hop business very early in his life, signing to the record label Trill Entertainment at the age of 14. He made several appearances on songs produced by the company, credited using his newfound alias, Little Fat. Sadly, both his career and life would be incredibly short. On June 7, 2012, Melvin was shot to death in Sandy Springs, Georgia at just 19 years of age, while waiting for his daughter to be born outside the hospital. A man by the name of DeAndre Washington was later arrested for the killing and sentenced to life in prison, and two of his associates were charged as accomplices. After investigating, authorities concluded that these men murdered Vernell as they believed he had been involved in a drug robbery against them. Richard William Stephen Saw, or Bushwick Bill as he is more commonly known, was a performer from Jamaica. Bill was born with dwarfism, and by the time he was a grown man, stood at only 3 feet 6 inches tall. He got his start as a dancer and rapper for the Ghetto Boys. However, things were not all good for the performer. During an argument with his girlfriend in which he was inebriated on drugs, Bill took out a gun and shot himself in the face. While he managed to survive this event, he was left permanently without a right eye. The Ghetto Boys actually used this event in their music, placing an image of Bill in the hospital on one of their later album covers. But on May 1st, 2019, Bushwick Bill was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. The disease quickly spread, and it was announced he had passed away on June 9th of that same year at the age of 52. 
Theodore Jones III was a rapper from Houston whose music career quickly gained traction after being noticed by other hip-hop artists from the Texas area. He signed on with Quality Control Music in 2015 under the name Young Greatness. His first song with them, titled Moolah, was an instant smash hit, topping the charts and skyrocketing Young Greatness to massive notoriety. As is sadly often the case though, many young rappers tend to be snuffed out in their prime. On October 29, 2018, Jones was shot to death in the parking lot outside a Waffle House in New Orleans. Authorities would later arrest Donald Rowe and Donnie Maxwell on charges of second-degree murder and armed robbery after surmising that the killing had occurred after a mugging gone awry. The Screwed Up Click was a rap collective partially founded by brothers John Big Hawk Hawkins and Patrick Fat Pat Hawkins. As the years went by, several of the group's creators began passing away. This included Fat Pat, who was killed by an unidentified assailant on February 3rd, 1998. Big Hawk stuck around, seeing it as his responsibility to keep the remaining group together and maintain the memory of his brother. He also had a successful solo career, and was a beloved staple of the underground rap scene in Houston. But on the night of May 1st, 2006, as he was walking from his car to visit a friend's house, Hawkins was ambushed and murdered by an unknown shooter. To this day, the murder remains unsolved. Daniel Dumil grew up in Long Island, New York. His talent was apparent very early on, and he began DJing around the third grade. In 1988, Daniel and his little brother DJ Subrock created the rap group KMD, with Dumil now performing under the name Zev Love X. But as they worked on their first album together, tragedy struck when Subrock was suddenly killed in a car accident. To add insult to injury, while Daniel continued continued to work on the project following his brother's passing, the label refused to release it due to the controversial nature of the cover art. After this, Dumil left the world of music for several years as he had become completely disillusioned with the industry. But he couldn't stay away from his passion forever. He began performing in small clubs under the name MF Doom, while wearing tights over his face as a disguise. Eventually, he upgraded to a metal mask designed to resemble the Marvel comic supervillain Doctor Doom. For his entire life, in addition to being a music lover, Daniel had also been fascinated with comic books. Now he had found a way to combine his two passions into one. As he continued performing, Doom finally felt comfortable working on studio produced projects once again. He began sampling from his favorite pop culture properties, be it in the songs themselves, the personas he took on to perform them, or even on the album's cover art. Doom's biggest success came in 2004 with the release of his album, Mad Villainy. After this, the rap world truly began taking notice of Doomil, as the album is currently rated the 7th highest of all time on Rate Your Music, above Dark Side of the Moon and Abbey Road. His clever lyrical wordplay and skill at musical storytelling were creating a sound completely unique from anything else at the time. Doom's career continued skyrocketing after this, as practically everyone on the hip-hop scene wanted to collaborate with him. Fans too were enamored with what the artist was creating. Unfortunately, these fans were devastated on December 31st, 2020, when Daniel's wife went to the internet to announce that her husband had passed away two months prior. No official cause of death has ever been released. Hip-hop fans and creators across the globe mourn the artist, many believing the world would never see someone quite like MF Doom ever again. Ronald Conenut Fields was a member of the ill-mannered posse. His distinctive, gravelly voice made him a fan favorite, and dozens of different artists requested to have him perform on their tracks. Conenut became one of the most well-known rappers in his area due to all of these guest appearances. Sadly though, this all ended when Ronald died in a car crash on September 4th, 2001. Tupac Shakur was born into a very political household, as both of his parents and several of his extended family members were involved with the Black Panther Party. With this background and his natural skill for wordplay and lyricism, Shakur discovered a love for rap in his teen years. He began performing under the name MC New York before being discovered and signing on to the group Digital Underground, where he dropped the pseudonym. 
It was here where he began to grow as a creative before releasing his debut solo album, Tupocalypse Now, in 1991, which exploded in popularity and sold over half a million copies. Listeners resonated with his sharp wit and political insight. The rapper only continued to grow in popularity from here with his music inspiring other young artists such as Eminem and perhaps most notably, the notorious B.I.G. These two would meet in 1993 and soon become close friends. However, this friendship would be cut short on November 30th, 1994, when Tupac was asked to go to Quad Studios in order to record a verse for another rapper. Upon arrival, he was ambushed, robbed, and shot. He was able to make a full recovery, but still held a grudge, believing the attack had been set up, at least in part by his former friend Biggie. This conflict reached a climax on September 7th, 1996, when Tupac was shot dead at a stoplight in Las Vegas. While no arrests were ever made in the case, it was hard for most onlookers to not draw a connection between the murder and the rapper's beef with the notorious B.I. After the fact, fans across the world mourned Tupac Shakur, many citing him as the greatest rapper to ever live. Christopher George Latour Wallace was born on May 21, 1972 in Brooklyn, New York. Growing up in poverty, the young man felt as though he had no choice but to turn to crime in order to get by. According to Wallace later in life, he had begun dealing drugs at just the age of 12. When he was 17, he dropped out of school to pursue these ventures full-time, but was eventually arrested for dealing as well as possessing illegal weapons. For this, he spent nine months in jail before being being released on bail. Following this, Wallace decided to go all in on a career in rap, something he had previously done as a hobby. He began performing under the name of Biggie Smalls, a reference to his childhood nickname which had been bestowed upon him due to his weight. It wouldn't be long until fellow rapper and producer Sean Combs heard his work, and would later sign him to his label. This was when he started going by his most well-known pseudonym, The Notorious B.I.G. Wallace's success escalated rapidly from here, and he was soon known as one of the greatest rappers on the East Coast. It was also around this time that Christopher met Tupac, and the two became fast friends. However, this companionship would end abruptly in 1994 when Shakur accused Wallace's label, Bad Boy Records, of setting him up for the robbery which resulted in him getting shot multiple times. The two got into multiple conflicts over the coming years, be it through diss tracks or in-person confrontations. Things finally came to a head when Tupac was shot dead. Not even a year later, on March 7th, 1997, Wallace was also shot and killed while stopped at a red light in Los Angeles. Once again, people linked the murder of B.I.G. to that of Tupac, but no arrests were ever made in the case. Trayvon Smart started his career in 2015 by uploading his music to SoundCloud under the name Jimmy Wapo. These songs soon gained traction when other hip-hop artists and owners of rap-centric publications took notice, giving him a newfound spotlight. Jimmy's YouTube uploads accumulated millions of views, and he was given the opportunity to collaborate with bigger artists like Wiz Khalifa. But this all came to an end on June 18th, 2018, when Smart was shot dead in his car at the age of 21. Following the murder, a police investigation turned up some evidence that Jimmy may have actually been a gang leader, linked to several other shooting deaths in the Pittsburgh area. Those who knew Trayvon disputed these claims, describing him as incredibly kind and charitable to the community. It seems as though this investigation did not get very far, but it serves as a dark stain on the rapper's otherwise upstanding reputation. Earl Simmons was born into a rough life. Growing up in poverty while suffering from severe asthma and being raised by an often abusive mother, it's no wonder he ended up going down an unfortunate path. From a very young age, he was jailed repeatedly for multiple offenses, including once setting a fire in the boarding school he had been enrolled in. After this, Earl was moved to a group home where he began writing and performing his original hip-hop music due to the encouragement of his new friends who recognized his talent. It was through this that the young musician met a fellow rapper named Reddy Ron, who was so impressed by what he heard that he asked Simmons to become his partner. 
The teenager eagerly accepted, taking on the alias DMX. As the years went by, he continued growing in popularity locally in New York, collaborating with several other East Coast rappers. DMX signed on with Rough House Records in 1991, and through them, he later released two albums that exploded him into mega stardom, selling millions of copies with the second going multi-platinum. Following this, DMX had essentially cemented his place in hip-hop history, and was widely regarded as one of the greatest rappers of his generation. In addition to hip-hop, DMX was also devoutly religious, having become a born-again Christian in the 2000s. He became a deacon, giving multiple sermons throughout his life, and even putting his music career on hold to follow his new passion. With that being said, this did not mean he was able to stay out of trouble. Even after being discovered and releasing multiple hit records, DMX still ended up getting arrested consistently over the years on charges ranging from robbery, animal abuse, and drug possession. He also found himself bankrupt multiple times. Despite making millions from rapping, the artist was still hemorrhaging money due to both his substance addictions and the fact he owed child support to 11 different women with whom he had sired a whopping 17 kids. Drugs were something DMX had struggled with for years after allegedly being tricked into smoking marijuana laced with crack cocaine as a teen. In February of 2016, Simmons was found unresponsive in the parking lot of a hotel after an apparent drug overdose. While in that instance he was able to be resuscitated, the same could not be said for April 2nd, 2021, when the hip-hop megastar suffered heart failure and was taken to the hospital. Although doctors did all they could to help him over the following week, DMX unfortunately passed away on April 9th, 2021 at 50 years of age. Jose Onfroy, better known by his stage name XXXTentacion, was a rapper who got his start on SoundCloud in 2013. His rise in popularity was due to several factors. One was his willingness to experiment, mixing in elements from a variety of other musical genres into his raps to create a unique sound to him. Another was his accessibility to his audience. In 2015, Jose began using his YouTube channel to upload vlogs and gaming videos, allowing his fanbase to see a side of him that few other rappers showed. But while he had a sizable amount of supporters, XXXTentacion was quite the controversial figure in the world of hip-hop. Not only did his songs and music videos often feature shocking imagery, but the young artist frequently got into feuds with other, bigger performers leading to him being labeled the most controversial man in rap. In addition to this, Jase was no stranger to illegal activities. Over the years, he was arrested for a plethora of violent crimes such as robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, and even once allegedly committing domestic violence against his girlfriend. That case would never end up getting resolved though, as on June 18th, 2018, the musician was held at gunpoint while leaving the parking lot of a motor store in Florida. His attackers wanted money, shooting the rapper dead before running off with a bag containing $5,000 that was in his car. While they tried to evade capture, over the following months, all four of the gunmen would eventually be arrested and indicted by authorities on charges of first-degree murder. Dominic Newton began his rap career at a young age when he and a group of his friends were discovered by a local performer by the name of C. Bo who took the youth to a recording studio that very same day in order to record a guest appearance on his album, Till My Casket Drops. The boys would soon spin off into their own group known as Mob Figas, with Dominic taking on the new alias, The Jacka. Newton proved to be one of the more enterprising members of the collective, as he also released several solo albums. His career was cut short though on February 2nd, 2015, when he was shot dead by an unknown gunman. He was 37. Deshaun Proof Holton got his start rapping with the group D12 in 1995, alongside Eminem. 
Although the lineup of the collective would change over the years, Proof remained a committed member and stayed friends with many of his old collaborators, continuing to perform with them for quite a while afterwards as they moved on to successful solo careers. On the night of April 11th, 2006, the rapper was engaged in a game of pool with a man named Keith Bender at a CCC club in Detroit. While the exact details of the events that followed differ across various retellings, there are a few things we know for certain. Allegedly, an argument broke out over the game which soon became incredibly heated. This was when the club's owner, Mario Etheridge, who was also Bender's cousin, stepped in and fired a warning shot into the air in order to defuse the situation. This apparently had the opposite effect, however, as Proof pulled out his gun and fatally shot Bender, resulting in Etheridge then opening fire on the artist, killing him instantly. Etheridge was later found guilty of carrying a concealed weapon and discharging a firearm in a building, for which he was given a sentence of time served and a $2,000 fine. Jordan Stepa J. Groggs was a founding member of the group Injury Reserve. The trio enjoyed moderate success over the years, releasing a steady stream of albums annually following their formation in 2013. Sadly, Groggs would pass away on June 29, 2020, although no official cause of death was released. Injury Reserve still continues to release albums and perform live, but the death of one of their founding members is still felt by those who remain. Leon Ivey Jr. began rapping as a teenager, taking the nickname Julio Iglesias, after the Spanish singer Julio Iglesias. This would not immediately become a career, though, as a larceny of arrests and an addiction to crack soon upturned his life. But Leon was eventually able to turn things around for himself, returning to his childhood passion in 1987 when he released his debut single, Whatcha Gonna Do, now simply going by the name Julio. He continued on this path for a few years before eventually being signed on to a label, Tommy Boy Records. Through them, Coolio saw the most success he had ever experienced thus far, as he released many songs that became big hits. Chief among them was the single, Gangsta's Paradise. While it was originally written for the soundtrack of the film Dangerous Minds, the tune quickly exploded in popularity beyond the original context, becoming one of the most successful rap songs ever written. Leon's career skyrocketed after this, as he began performing with other superstar artists and even appeared as himself in cameos on multiple TV shows. This popularity was maintained for decades following, as Coolio remained one of the most iconic names in the world of hip-hop. But on September 8th, 2022, fans across the world were heartbroken by the news that the megastar rapper passed away from cardiac arrest at the age of 59. Derek Coleman was the cousin of popular Chicago rapper Chief Keef, and used that connection to begin his own music career under the name of Fredo Santana. With his ties to the world of hip-hop, Derek was able to release several mixtapes featuring appearances by mega-popular artists in the game. As the rising star continued collaborating with bigger and bigger names, it seemed there was nowhere for his career to go but up. However, as all of this was happening, Fredo was dealing with some serious medical issues as well. Not only was he diagnosed with epilepsy after suffering a seizure in 2017, but just a few months later, he was also found to have liver and kidney failure, with doctors linking it back to the young man's heavy drug use. Despite Fredo stating a desire to clean up his act, he sadly wouldn't get a chance to do so, as he passed away from a seizure on January 19th, 2018. Ricky T. Dunnigan began rapping in his teen years alongside his half-brother, DJ Paul, under the name Lord Infamous. It wasn't long before they met up with another Memphis-based hip-hop musician, Juicy J, with whom they formed the performing group 3-6 Mafia. They were well known for their horror-themed tracks, as Lord Infamous himself had a fascination with all things demonic. On December 20th, 2013, Dunnigan passed away in his sleep after suffering a heart attack at the age of 40. 
Leonard Anderson, a.k.a. L.A. Capone, was a Chicago rapper and member of the gang The Black Disciples. On the evening of September 26, 2013, as the performer was leaving his studio for the night, he was attacked in an alley by an assailant who shot him several times before leaving his teenage victim for dead. Saki Hardy Johnson, otherwise known as Little Mick, was later arrested for the murder alongside two accomplices, Mako Buchanan and Michael Mays. Allegedly, the killing was gang-related, as all three of those charged were associated with the rival group 051 Young Money. Little Mick was sentenced to 60 years behind bars. Armies Joseph Askadum earned his famous nickname, Nipsey Hussle, due to his strong work ethic and his consistent desire to expand his career. He began rapping by selling mixtapes out of the trunk of his car, which eventually earned him a loyal fan base in his area. It wouldn't be long before success escalated into Hustle being signed to a record label, through which he was able to collaborate with popular artists like Drake and Snoop Dogg. As time went on, the growing rapper's enterprising spirit continued to increase, as he began his own recording label known as All Money in Records. He also opened a store called Marathon Clothing in 2017. Tragically though, this symbol of his enterprising spirit would also end up being the final place Nipsey Hussle ever stood. On March 31st, 2019, the 33-year-old entrepreneur was shot dead in the parking lot of the Marathon Clothing Store by Eric Ronald Holder Jr. While an exact motive is not known for certain, police believe the killing to have been perpetrated due to a personal dispute between the two men. Holder was later arrested and found guilty of first-degree murder. Jason Johnson was a moderately well-known gangster rapper in his hometown of Savannah, Georgia under his alias Camouflage. On May 19th, 2003, as he was standing with his son outside his recording studio, Johnson was shot at by an unidentified gunman. While the young boy was unharmed, his father was less lucky, as the rapper later passed away in the hospital from his wounds. While the murder remains unsolved, there are many who suspect it to have been motivated by a drug deal gone sour. Bruce Edward Washington was a frequent collaborator with Tupac Shakur as a part of the rap group Outlaw Immortals. Since the goal of the collective was to portray themselves as villains, Washington chose his stage name as Hussein Fatal, based on Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. After the deaths of fellow Outlaw Immortals members Tupac and Yaki Qaddafi, Hussein faded from the spotlight for a few years before returning to perform both with the group and also as a solo artist. On July 10th, 2015, the rapper was killed in a car crash when his girlfriend was driving under the influence. She was soon arrested and charged with a DUI, vehicular homicide, and reckless driving. MacArthur Swindle, more commonly referred to as OTF Nanu, was a rapper and cousin of popular Chicago hip-hop artist Little Dirk. OTF was an acronym standing for Only the Family, a sign of MacArthur's loyalty to his relatives. On May 31st, 2014, as the young rapper sat in his car in a strip mall parking lot, he was approached and shot several times by an unidentified attacker. In a panic, Mr. Swindle lurched his vehicle forward, crashing into the front window of the store before passing away from his injuries at the scene. No arrests were ever made, but police suspected gang involvement. Timothy Tim Dog Blair gained prominence during the East Coast-West Coast, Coast hip-hop feud of the 1990s. As a lifelong New Yorker, Blair had become frustrated with the popularity of the California-based group N.W.A. and their hit song, Straight Outta Compton. In response, he released a song of his own dissing the titular city from the popular track. Tim Dog's single became a moderate hit in the New York area, prompting him to release more songs dissing other California rappers as the years went on. As you can imagine, this made Blair a controversial figure in the world of hip-hop but he eventually stepped away from that world in the mid-2000s. However, he would later find himself back in the spotlight in 2019, when he pleaded guilty to grand larceny. Allegedly, he had met a woman by the name of Esther Pilgrim in an online chat room in 2007, and had conned her out of $32,000 by falsely claiming the money was so he could restart his career. The courts ordered he would need to pay back $19,000 in restitution to the victim. 
Things would go from bad to worse on February 14th, 2013, when reports came out that the former rapper had died due to complications with his diabetes. Esther was having none of it though, believing that Blair had faked his own death in order to get out of paying what he owed, and an investigation was soon opened up. But on September 15th, 2014, it was revealed that Tim Dog had indeed passed away in February the year prior. Renetta Lowe Bridgewater was one of the first female rappers ever signed to the label Cash Money Records. Under the name Magnolia Shorty, she made a name for herself in the New Orleans hip-hop scene with her sexually explicit and humorous lyrics. On December 20th, 2010, as Magnolia Shorty was driving into the parking lot of her apartment building with a man named Jerome Hampton, a car swerved in front of them, blocking their path. Two men then got out of the vehicle and opened fire, killing the rapper and her associate. As authorities investigated the crime, they believed it to have been a gang-related attack on Hampton, with Magnolia Shorty simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ten men suspected of being part of the 39ers gang were arrested, with McCoy Walker and Terius Oni being convicted for the killing. Eric Eazy E. Wright was a founding member of the iconic California hip-hop group N.W.A as well as their record label, Ruthless Records. The band's reputation for their often violent and vulgar lyrics are seen by many as having paved the way for the mainstream popularity of gangsta hip-hop, with Easy e specifically often referred to as the godfather of gangsta rap. Eric's aggressive persona came from his life growing up in the slums of Compton, with friends noting that he had to forge a protective armor in order to survive. This came through even in his solo work, as his debut album, Easy Does It, gained popularity due to the exact same crass demeanor. But that success was nothing compared to his following project with N.W.A., titled Straight Outta Compton. The album, most notably the song, F the Police, featured lyrics so intense that even law enforcement took notice. The FBI sent Ruthless Records a letter expressing their displeasure with the track. Rather than backing down though, Eazy E and NWA took it as a point of pride, using the letter to help advertise their live performances. Unfortunately, in February of 1995, Eric Wright was diagnosed with AIDS. A month later, on March 26th, Eazy E passed passed away from his condition at the young age of 30. Adolf Robert Thornton Jr. found success as a rapper in his local area of Memphis, Tennessee when he began releasing music under the name Young Dolph. As he grew in popularity, he also inadvertently put a target on his back when he wrote an album titled King of Memphis. This drew the ire of other hip-hop artists who lived in the city. Most prominent among these was Yo Gotti, with whom Dolph exchanged several diss tracks back and forth. Things drastically escalated in February of 2017, when Thorne's car was targeted by gunfire, although the vehicle had been bulletproofed and nobody was hurt. While many suspected Yo Gotti to have been the perpetrator, no convictions were ever made in the case. Just a few months later, on September 26th, young Dolph was shot at yet again while in Hollywood. Even though he was in critical condition for several hours, doctors were eventually able to save the rapper's life. Once again, onlookers suspected Yo Gotti's involvement, and his friend, Corey McClendon, was arrested for the crime, although no charges ever stuck. For a long time, this seemed to be the end of it, as Adolph managed to avoid any further attempts on his life for several years that followed. His luck would eventually run out on November 17th, 2021, when young Dolph was murdered in a drive-by shooting back home in Memphis. Two men were arrested for the crime, Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith, with another suspect by the name of Shundale Bennett being named as a potential accomplice. They are currently awaiting trial. Trentavious Zayman White originally rapped under the name Young Fresh before transitioning to Bankroll Fresh. While he seemed well-liked in the hip-hop community, White's career was cut short when he was shot dead on March 4th, 2016, at the age of 28. While no arrests were ever made, the artist's old friend and fellow rapper No Plug later admitted to his involvement in the incident, claiming Bankroll Fresh fired the first shot, and he merely acted in self-defense. Jared Anthony Higgins got his start by uploading his original rap compositions to SoundCloud under the name Juice World, based on the film Juice starring Tupac Shakur. 
This was during the era when many up-and-coming rappers were independently releasing their music to the internet, and Juice World soon became one of the main faces of this trend. It wasn't long before he was signed to Interscope Records, allowing him to go on tour and create music which appeared on the Billboard charts. His sound represented a new era of hip-hop dubbed emo rap by many which seemed to resonate heavily with young people in the internet age. On December 8th, 2019, while on a flight to Chicago, Jared's plane was boarded by law enforcement officers upon its arrival in order to search for drugs. Panicking, the young artist reportedly swallowed several Percocet pills that he had on his person in order to avoid being caught. This caused him to soon enter a convulsing state, resulting in Juice World being rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Trouble, real name Mariel Orr, was a Georgia-based rapper well known for his songs detailing the harsh realities of life in his home city of Atlanta. On the night of June 5th, 2022, Orr was visiting the apartment of a female friend. Suddenly, a man by the name of Ja Michael Jones allegedly burst in and opened fire. According to authorities after the fact, Jones and the woman were involved in an ongoing dispute, one which the rapper was not part of. While the woman herself was unharmed, Trouble ended up being killed by the gunfire. Jones fled the scene, but was later arrested and charged with murder. Charles Charisma Hicks Jr. was one half of a rap duo alongside his good friend Chris Manak, aka Peanut Butter Wolf. They started their career by performing locally and gaining a following in their hometown of San Jose before being discovered and signed on to the label Hollywood Records. The thing is, this did not end up being the blessing it would appear to be on the surface. The rappers and their producers constantly butted heads over creative disputes, leading to Hicks and Manak eventually being released from their contract. Sadly, they would not get the opportunity for a second chance at a different label. On December 6, 1993, while stopped at a red light outside a church in El Paso, Charisma was shot and killed in an apparent mugging gone wrong. Bruce Anthony Parrish Jr., otherwise referred to as B. Brazy, was a Los Angeles-based hip-hop artist and a member of The Blood Gang. He also previously joined up with Bloods and Crips, a rap group created to unite members of the two rival factions, similar to Tweety Bird Lock. On May 9, 2003, Parrish was shot dead in his motel room. While no arrests were ever made, many suspect it to have been a gang-related attack. Courtney Everill Duror Jr. began performing under the name Capital Steez before he was even 18 years old. Alongside childhood friend and fellow rapper Joey Badass, he helped found the Brooklyn-based rap group Pro Era in 2011. As a part of this collective, Steez became one of the most prominent faces in a new wave of East Coast rappers. Tragically, this young talent's life was cut short just a year later. On December 23rd, 2012, Capital Steez walked up to the roof of the Cinematic Music Group headquarters in Manhattan, texted his friends and family that he loved them, tweeted the phrase, the end, and jumped at the age of 19. Albert Johnson was born into a very musical family, with many of his relatives having successful careers in the industry, including his mother and father. While in high school, he met his friend, Kehuan Machita, with whom he would go on to form the rap duo Mob Depp. Albert and Kehuan performed under the names Prodigy and Havoc, respectively, and continued releasing music over the years as they rose through the ranks of popularity. Eventually, they became two of the most prominent faces of the New York rap scene, heavily representing the East Coast side of the conflict in the hip-hop wars of the 1990s. Throughout all of this, Prodigy was struggling with sickle cell disease, which he finally spoke about publicly in the year 2000 with his song, You Can Never Feel My Pain. While he continued fighting and producing music for nearly two decades after this, Albert would succumb to his illness on June 20th, 2017. Gustav Elijah Orr began releasing music on SoundCloud in 2013 under the name Little Peep, based on his mother's childhood nickname for him. He was a self-described loner in high school, and channeled that isolation into his music, soon becoming one of the most notable people in emo rap. Listeners gravitated to Gustav for his unique sound, as well as his candidness with his fanbase. He would often discuss his inner thoughts and feelings on social media, even coming out publicly as bisexual, a relative rarity in the world of rap. 
On November 15th, 2017, while traveling on his tour bus on the way to Arizona, Peep began posting online about all the drugs he was taking, including mushrooms, cannabis, Xanax, and other unidentified opiates. This all proved too much for his system, and Gustav was later found unresponsive in the back of the vehicle and pronounced dead at the scene. Some speculated that the exorbitant amount of drugs the rapper had been taking was a deliberate attempt to end his own life. As one of his posts was captioned, When I die, you'll love me. Little Mark Campbell was a small local rapper living in Chicago and a member of the gang 051 Young Money. On March 25, 2014, the musician released a music video mocking a rival gang in the area. Only a few days later, on March 28th, Little Mark was shot dead in an attack. While no arrests were made in the case, it was hard for onlookers not to connect the two events. Davin Bennett, better known as King Vaughn, was a hip-hop artist from Chicago. While he enjoyed a fairly successful rap career, he conversely also had several run-ins with the law throughout his life. In July of 2014, Davon was arrested on suspicion of murdering a man by the name of Malcolm Stockley, although the charges were later dropped when witnesses failed to testify. He was detained once again in June of 2019, alongside fellow rapper Little Dirk, for allegedly shooting and robbing someone in Atlanta. While he was released on a $300,000 bond, he would not live long enough to face trial. On November 6, 2020, King Vaughn was involved in an argument outside a hookah bar that soon escalated into gunfire. The rapper died from his injuries at the scene. Jamian Davis was a member of the rap group Stink Team under the name Ketchy the Great. The band had previously been labeled a gang by Los Angeles authorities, causing the artist to have several run-ins with the law throughout his life, although this would only enhance his reputation amongst his fans. His life came to an abrupt end, though, on February 15th, 2021, when Ketchy was crossing the street in Long Beach, California, and was struck down by an oncoming vehicle. Rolly Bands, real name Ari Williams, was a performer based in Florida. He apparently liked to stir up trouble and ruffle the feathers of other rappers in the area. In July of 2022, Rolly posted an open challenge to all of his critics and enemies on Instagram. It read, A lot of these blanks know where I live at for real. I sleep in peace. If a blank wants smoke, I'm at my crib in five minutes. Five minutes later, Rolly Bands was shot and killed outside of his apartment building. James Adaryl Tapp Jr. began his career under the name Magnolia Slim, performing locally in the projects of New Orleans. Upon being discovered and signed to a record label, though, he would change his stage name to Soldier Slim. He quickly gained success, with his debut album reaching number 13 in the Billboard charts. While he continued rapping for several years, Soldier was murdered by gunfire on November 26, 2003, in front of his mother's house. While a man was arrested for the crime, the charges were eventually dropped after lack of witness testimony. Bashar Baraka Jackson began rapping in 2018 and quickly took a liking to it. Within just a year, the young man was signed to a label, had released a wildly popular single, Welcome to the Party, and was now going by the name Pop Smoke. However, with this meteoric rise came an even more sudden and destructive fall. On February 19th, 2020, Smoke's Airbnb was invaded by a group of armed criminals. They first captured the rapper's female companion before heading upstairs to where their target was showering. They then opened fire on him before fleeing the scene. While authorities first believed the crime to have been gang-related due to the victim's association with the Crips, they later deduced it to have been nothing more than a burglary gone awry. Allegedly, Pop Smoke had been targeted by this group of robbers after he had posted several photos on social media, showing off many expensive gifts he had recently received, accidentally revealing the address of where he was staying in the background. Four suspects were arrested for the crime, with the youngest being at just 15 years of age. Aside from his music, Glenn Doby Thomas could best be recognized by his signature eye patch, which he wore after being injured in a shooting in 2009. On December 28, 2013, Thomas was at the Centennial Bar and Grill in Montgomery, Alabama, when a gunman opened fire. 
killing the rapper and two bystanders, as well as injuring several others. A man by the name of Jason McWilliams was later arrested after turning himself over to authorities. As was soon discovered, the two men had a pre-existing beef. McWilliams was sentenced to 85 years behind bars. Juan Bartista Garcia was a young rapper with a modest following in Hartford, Connecticut. On August 8, 2021, Juan was shot and killed while sitting in his car. It didn't take authorities long to track down the suspect, using nearby surveillance cameras to discover a 19-year-old named Travis Johnson. Allegedly, the teen had targeted the hip-hop artist in an attempt to rob him of his marijuana supply. Joseph Little Jojo Coleman was a young man who aspired to be a rapper. Thinking of strategies to gain attention, the youth took note of the disc culture in rap. With up-and-coming artists creating songs mocking other performers in order to boost their notoriety, JoJo set his sights on fellow Chicago-based rapper Chief Keef, posting multiple music videos making fun of the Black Disciples gang member. On top of that, he also drove through the gang's territory, searching out Keef's friends and shouting insults at them. That evening, on September 4th, 2017, Joseph Coleman was shot and killed in an attack while riding his bike in his neighborhood. Lamont Coleman, otherwise known as Big L, proved to be a skilled writer from a young age. In high school, he discovered a love for stringing words together into clever and catchy rhymes, eventually evolving into a career in rap as an adult. As he grew in popularity and released multiple albums and mixtapes, he would also join many New York-based hip-hop groups, quickly making him a well-known icon of the local music scene. Many noted his skill for lyrical wordplay, with some even going so far as to call Big L one of the best storytellers in all of rap. Sadly, on February 15, 1999, Lamont Coleman died in a drive-by shooting in Harlem. The rapper's childhood friend, Gerard Woodley, was arrested for the crime, but ended up being released due to lack of evidence. Malcolm James McCormick had a deep love for music, teaching himself multiple instruments at just six years old. He began rapping in high school and soon started releasing mixtapes under the name Mac Miller. It wouldn't be long until he was picked up by a record label and exploded in popularity, becoming one of the most promising young artists of his generation, with his name being spoken in the same sentence as the likes of Kendrick Lamar. It was largely Miller's expressive musical style that made him such a superstar in the 2010s, as he enjoyed implementing a more jazzy sound into his compositions. As he maintained his fame, the stress and pressure continued to build on the young performer, causing him to self-medicate with drugs. It wouldn't be long before this spiraled into an addiction, causing the singer to have several run-ins with the law, including being arrested for a DUI in May of 2018. On September 8th of that same year, Mac Miller was found dead in his home after overdosing on fentanyl and cocaine. Craig Mack got his start as a roadie for the rap group EPMD before he eventually met producer Sean Combs, who signed him onto his label Bad Boy Records. Mack was the very first rapper to create a song under the label, releasing the single Flava In Your Ear in 1994. While this song did prove to be popular, Mac was quickly overshadowed by other bad boy rappers like the Notorious B.I.G., and failed to reproduce the same level of success with his follow-up tracks. After a few more attempts to make it big, Craig Mack would disappear from the spotlight for several years. That was until 2012, when it was revealed that the former hip-hop artist had joined the Overcomer Ministry. This South Carolina-based Christian commune has received a fair deal of controversy since its inception in 1978, with some even describing it as a cult. The church's founder, Ralph Gordon Stair was the main cause of concern for most critics after he was arrested in 2017 on charges of sexual misconduct with a minor. As for Craig Mack, he could be seen in a video posted by the church, standing next to Stair and freestyle rapping about his turn toward religion. On March 12, 2018, the evangelical hip-hop performer passed away due to heart failure at the age of 46. Paul Hartz was a small local rapper in South Carolina, performing using the alias 18 Veno. In order to fund his passion, Hartz allegedly had a side business selling marijuana. Unfortunately, this would prove to be his downfall. 
On January 23rd, 2021, as 18 Venno was going about his work, he was robbed of his drugs and shot dead. A young man named Christopher Lamont McCullough was later arrested for the murder. Ronald Chase Amick was one of the many rap artists who rose to prominence on SoundCloud in the late 2010s, uploading his music under the name Six Dogs. In addition to hip-hop, Amick also expressed himself through painting. While he didn't quite reach the heights of some of his contemporaries, he still saw a good deal of success in his own right and was well-liked by the community. Thus, fans and creators alike were shocked to hear that Six Dogs passed away on January 26, 2021, after plummeting from the roof of a building. Some speculated as to whether or not this was deliberate, but nothing is known for certain. Lola Chantrell Mitchell, better known by her stage name, Gangsta Boo, was a musician from Memphis, Tennessee, who combined the southern R&B genre with rap. She saw a good amount of success in her career and gained a loyal fan base, even being one of the first women inducted into the popular group 36 Mafia after joining their spin-off band, Da Mafia 6. On January 1st, 2023, Gangsta Boo was found dead in her home. While no official cause of death has been confirmed as of writing, early sources seem to indicate a drug overdose. Vincent Cochran was mostly referred to by his alter ego Slim 400 and was an up-and-coming lyricist from California. Slim was no stranger to conflict. In 2019, he was gunned down in a drive-by shooting. Despite being shot eight times and being placed in critical condition, he managed to pull through. Unfortunately, this would not be the case the second time around. On December 8th, 2021, Slim 400 was shot to death outside of his home in LA. A man by the name of Michael Linnell Terry was later arrested for the murder, with Tamara Lynn Bell charged as an accessory. Despite having the suspects in custody, a motive for the crime is not currently known. Draco the Ruler, real name Darrell Wayne Caldwell, was a rapper who gained notoriety due to his unique sound. He incorporated elements of trap music into his songs, causing him to stand out from his West Coast contemporaries and gain an audience. Like many rap artists from this era, Draco was also involved in gang activity, as he was associated with the previously mentioned group Stink Team. He was arrested several times over his career, including once in 2018 when he was put into custody under charges of first-degree murder. While he was eventually acquitted of the crime, he and his fellow team friends were under heavy scrutiny from law enforcement. On December 18th, 2021, while waiting backstage at the Once Upon a Time in LA Music Festival, Draco was ambushed and stabbed in the neck. While the murder remains unsolved, authorities suspect the motive to be gang-related. Rakid Javan Render began pursuing his passion for rap after experiencing the death of a close friend at 18 years old. He proved himself quite skilled, taking the name Little Keed and performing alongside his brother Little Got It. While he started small, it wouldn't be long before he was signed to a record label and releasing albums featuring appearances from the likes of Travis Scott, Future, and Little Uzi Vert. This was all cut short, unfortunately, when Rakid suddenly passed away on May 13th, 2022, at the age of 24. While no official cause of death has ever been made public, sources confirm that he died from natural causes. Danny D-Boy Rodriguez was a devout Christian and channeled his love for his religion into music. He only released two albums over his career to moderate success, with his songs being fairly well-liked amongst Christian circles. Despite performing in the rap genre, Danny disliked the label, preferring to call himself a street poet instead. On October 6, 1990, Rodriguez's life came to a sudden and unexpected end when he was gunned down in front of his apartment. Given the street poet's squeaky clean image, both his family and authorities were left baffled as to why this happened. To this day, nobody knows the answer, with theories ranging from a mugging gone wrong to a simple case of mistaken identity. Randy Stretch Walker was a close friend of Tupac, producing and featuring on many of his tracks. He had a successful career in rap before meeting him, teaming up with his brother to form the duo Live Squad. But once Stretch became friends with Tupac is when things really took off. 
The two were tied at the hip, often making public appearances together and treating one another as family behind the scenes. All of this changed in November of 1994, though, when Tupac, Stretch, and a few of their other associates were robbed at gunpoint in the lobby of Quad Studios. This event shattered many relationships in Shakur's life. He expressed a feeling of betrayal that his friend did nothing to fend off the attackers, and even seemed to imply a suspicion that Walker may have been involved somehow. This event put a permanent wedge in the relationship for the rest of their lives. On November 30th, 1995, Stretch was gunned down in his car after a drive-by shooting. A year later, Tupac Shakur would be killed in a very similar attack. Yafeu Fula, better known as Yaki Gaddafi, was yet another member of the rap group Outlaws. In fact, Gaddafi was actually in the car when legendary rapper Tupac was assassinated, watching his friend and collaborator die right before his eyes. Just a couple months after that event, on November 10th, 1996, Yaki Gaddafi was also murdered in New Jersey. Christopher Lee Rios began writing rap music during a period of time when he was homeless in the Bronx. Eventually, once his luck began turning around, he started releasing these songs under the name Big Punisher, or Big Pun for short. It wouldn't be long before he was discovered by Fat Joe, another New York rapper of Puerto Rican descent, and the two collaborated on a few tracks together. Even as Big Pun's career began rising independently, he still remained friends with Fat Joe, even joining his group Terror Squad in 1999. Despite his musical success, Rio struggled with depression for his entire life, which he coped with by binge eating excessively. At his heaviest, he weighed nearly 700 pounds. It was perhaps no surprise then when Big Pun passed away from heart failure on February 7th, 2000, at just 28 years of age. Andre Hicks' early rap songs were filled with lyrics railing against the police in his hometown of Vallejo, California. During the 1990s, authorities were on high alert following a string of bank robberies in the city, and Hicks felt that their methods of surveillance went too far. He expressed these thoughts in his music, releasing it under the name Mac Dre. As his songs grew in popularity throughout his community, a target was placed on the rapper's back. In March of 1992, Hicks was arrested on charges of conspiracy to commit robbery, after he and his friends were allegedly spotted casing a bank in the area. Despite declaring his innocence, Mac Dre ended up being sentenced to five years behind bars. He returned to making music upon his release, with audiences noting his high intensity and fast beats. On November 1st, 2004, a van that Hicks was riding in was targeted by gunfire, killing him instantly when a bullet struck his neck. No arrests were ever made in the case. Russell Tyrone Jones, better known as Old Dirty Bastard, or just ODB for short, was one of the founding members of the Wu-Tang Clan, alongside several of his childhood friends. The group went on to megastardom, releasing several popular albums and becoming one of the most well-known names in the history of hip-hop. ODB himself was instrumental in that success, as his minimalist style helped define the sound of both his solo work and his music with Wu-Tang Clan. Jones also had a charitable attitude, helping those less fortunate in his community whenever he could. Most notably, while recording music in his studio in February of 1998, he witnessed a car accident on the street outside. The rapper quickly rushed downstairs and organized a group who were able to lift up the wrecked vehicle, saving the four-year-old girl trapped underneath. Unfortunately, not everything about ODB's life was so positive. He was arrested multiple times over the years, mainly for charges involving robbery and shoplifting. Many attributed this behavior to drug addiction, as the musical artist had been detained for possession of crack cocaine. He was sentenced to spend time at a drug treatment facility, but escaped in October of 2000, spending one month on the lam. He was later captured again by law enforcement when he was mobbed by fans outside of a McDonald's. On November 13th, 2004, Russell Jones suddenly collapsed while in his recording studio. Doctors discovered a lethal amount of cocaine and tramadol in his system, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. VL Mike Allen was a gangsta rapper from New Orleans and a member of the Chopper City Boys. This wouldn't last long though, as he left the group after releasing one album in order to pursue a solo career. 
he would later be shot and killed by an unknown assailant on April 20th, 2008. Roderick Anthony Burton II started rapping in his teen years alongside several of his friends, creating the group The Rascal Crew, although they released only one single before breaking up. Burton continued to pursue a career in rap, eventually meeting hip-hop entrepreneur Sean Combs, who hired the young musician as a model for his clothing line. This gave him the notoriety and connections he needed to continue following his passion, and he began releasing music under the name Dalla in 2007. On May 18th, 2009, Dalla was shot and killed in Los Angeles. A man by the name of Aubrey Berry was soon arrested for the crime, which he claimed to have been committed in self-defense. Prosecutors disagreed, however, stating that Barry had pre-existing beef with the victim after they had gone into a fight in an Atlanta nightclub a few days prior. Barry was later acquitted on all charges, and no official convictions have ever been made in the murder of Dalla. Michael Larson got his start by participating in rap battles under the name Idea. He proved to be quite skilled at it, winning several competitions over the course of his career. Many of his fans considered him to be a freestyle genius, always seeming to find the perfect way to combine words together. In addition to rap, Michael also enjoyed writing poetry, proving that he had a passion for language beyond music. Idea would pass away as he slept on October 16th, 2010, after an apparent drug overdose. James DeWitt Yancey grew up in a household full of sound, as both of his parents had successful careers in performing. This environment was clearly very influential to the young man, growing a passion for the art form before he was even able to speak. As he became older and continued honing his craft, Yancey met several other rappers and even got the chance to perform on stage at Lollapalooza. He would create and produce remixes for many big-name artists, including Janet Jackson and Busta Rhymes. As his career as a music producer expanded, Yancey also began performing his own works under the name Jay Dilla. He proved to be incredibly successful in his own right, with many crediting him for helping put his hometown of Detroit, Michigan on the map in the world of hip-hop. Sadly, as all of this was happening, Jay Dilla was also struggling with multiple health concerns. Not only did he suffer from lupus, but also a blood disorder known as TTP. Jay Dilla did not stop working, no matter how badly his body deteriorated, and he even went on stage to perform while confined to a wheelchair. Despite fighting his illness for years, James Yancey would pass away on February 10th, 2006 at 32 years of age. So there you have 100 rappers that will be missed. And if you think there's any others that weren't mentioned in this video but should have been, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And with that, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.